Writers love to talk about things that are going to make them obsolete. First it was the radio. People are going to stop reading and just listen to the radio. Then it was TV. People are going to stop reading and just watch TV. Then it was the internet. People are going to stop reading and just watch cat videos and whatever the hell people do on Instagram, I'm still not sure. The rapidly evolving technological landscape is making novels and other forms of written entertainment a lot less flashy and less appealing. And even the mediums themselves are beginning to come under attack, what with the rise of AI, which might take humans out of creating writing altogether. These are all legitimate concerns, and I do think writers are right to be worried about them to some degree, but there's another threat to writing that doesn't get as much attention, and that's what I want to talk about today. One of the criticisms around AI written work is that it's entirely derivative. You can feed an AI a million different novels, and it will learn all sorts of patterns and absorb all sorts of information, and then it will spit out a new novel that is just an amalgamation of everything that it's learned. There's no personal experience, there's no emotion imparted to the work because the AI has no real world experience. It's not able to feel emotions. It's never been in the situations it's writing about or anything close to those situations. When an AI writes about a character being romantically rejected, it's purely derivative because that AI has never actually experienced that. There is no unique perspective with which to color the work. We talk about this as a problem with AI, but there's a possibility that the next generation of human writers will have the exact same problem. Young people today are growing up in a world that is markedly different from the world that any other generation has grown up in. Technological innovations over the past couple centuries have brought us industrialization, massive advances in medical science, massive advances in warfare. The Industrial Revolution created technology that allowed unprecedented production of consumer goods at the expense of the environment. The Atomic Age brought us weapons that brought us unprecedented levels of security at the expense of the possibility of the planet being destroyed in like 11 minutes. Technological innovations in the internet age have brought us advancements that have made it easier to connect with people all over the world, while at the same time destroying traditional ways of human interaction. People are living increasingly isolated, lonely, fully digital lives. Less kids see their friends every day today, less kids play organized sports, less people go to church, there has been a cratering in membership in fraternal and community organizations, more and more people don't speak to their neighbors, let alone know their names. People report having fewer friends, fewer people are getting married, fewer people are forming households, more people are living alone. We've traded human interaction for increased screen time. When we do communicate, it's over text message or with strangers on the internet. There are ever-growing numbers of people, especially young people, whose entire social lives are centered around Reddit, Instagram, and YouTube. Connecting is easier than ever, but we have never been more disconnected. I don't think that you can overstate the impact that leading such a life would have on the capability of a writer we know it has a negative impact on their capability as a person. When you have an entire generation whose only experience or most of their experience is online, you lose so much of what only humans can capture in a piece of writing. Yes, you've probably never stared down a dragon with just a sword before, but if you faced a bully or confronted a friend or stood up for yourself in some way, then you'll at least know some of the experience. You know what the emotional overtones of these experiences are. How can someone write about romantic chemistry or the sting of rejection when all of dating has been reduced to swiping left or swiping right? How can you write about a training montage, a character really sweating to accomplish something out in the world, when you spend 18 hours a day on your couch, crouched over your phone? What effect does this isolation have on the ability for people to get their writing critiqued? Would they even be able to handle the stress of interacting with another person at that level? The kind of positive and negative experiences that you have interacting with other people out in the real world are incredibly important for creating new, interesting writing. It's these experiences that color your writing with your own experience and add your own unique voice to it. 
Yes, you can get rejected online. Yes, you can experience emotion online. But God help me if you think that that's the same thing as being out in the real world. There are so many skills that you can only build when you are interacting with people. Walking into a room and reading body language, understanding the subtle signals that people give you, the nuances of human interaction. You do develop skills when you interact with people. But another thing that you learn is that you are more resilient than you thought you were. The rejection and negative emotions that come with just being out and living your life aren't the end of the world and you can move on. When you isolate people like so many people are isolated today, then these skills start to atrophy and people can't have these experiences. No experience means that the novels written in the next 20 or 30 years might not be any more insightful than what an AI can spit out. Now I recognize that creative writing is but one casualty of this sort of problem and likely not one that's the highest priority. Other casualties are things like marriage, community, mental health, and the basic social cohesion of our species. All things that are arguably more important than fiction novels. But if you care about writing as an art form, you need to understand that it is under threat. So what can be done about all of this? Well, I know that a bunch of people are going to leap forward with suggestions. We need to elect this politician, we need to pass this law, the tech companies need to start doing this thing, the schools need to start doing that thing. All of these are potentially valid solutions, but I want to focus on one thing that I think is more actionable, at least for you watching this video here today. If this issue is something that concerns you, and if you want to take a step towards improving it, then I recommend you go have a conversation with somebody about it. A real face-to-face -face conversation with an actual person who is in the same room as you. Don't just go and blurt this out to a stranger on the street, that probably won't go well. It's a small step, but people talking to each other is one of the first steps to solving the problem. I don't know what it will take to fix this, I don't know what it will take to reverse the trends that we're seeing, but this is at least a start. It's something that we can all do, it's something that we can all try. This is not a problem that's going to be solved by someone saying something in a video or someone tweeting about it. It requires a much more involved solution. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.